All right, everybody, let's uh, kick this webinar off. The contents of this material are for informational purposes only and do not constitute investment advice. Blue Sky Binary assumes no responsibility for any potential errors, inaccuracies, or omissions in this material. Nothing in this communication contains or should be considered as containing an investment advice or an investment recommendation or a solicitation for the purpose of purchase or sale of any financial instrument. Binary options trading may not be suitable for all investors as it carries a very high degree of risk to your capital. Trading such products is risky and you may lose all of your investment. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Poor fill rates, expiry times, market volatility, and platform errors could result in losing trades. Before deciding to invest in binary options, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience, and risk appetite. You should be aware of all the risks associated with foreign exchange and binary options trading and seek advice from an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. So the agenda for today is to describe to you currently binary options uh, trading traders, the difference between binary options as an asset class relative to FX. Then I want to spend a little bit of time going over how FX exactly works. Then we will go over how to set your risk levels, how FX brokerages make money, and how that differs to how binary option brokerages make money. There is some uh, prerequisite level of knowledge that I uh, require you to have if you want to venture with us in FX at this stage. And then some regulated deposit and trading options that I will run over. And then we'll also discuss next steps for those of you that are interested in transitioning over or expanding into FX with us. And then as always at the end, we'll have a quick Q&A. If I have not been able to address anything, you can of course contact me or my team at support at blueskybinary.com. So to the left here, you see the various criteria on which um, a money-making operation uh, in, in any, any asset class is um, considered viable or not and how it works. And we're going to compare binary options and foreign exchange. So starting with how exactly do traders make money? Well, in binary options, uh, you are rewarded 75% ROI on average. It could be you know, as low as 65, as high as 90, depending on the time of day and which asset it is you're trading in binary options. But the average is 75. And if you are right on your call or put position, just even by one micro pip, you are rewarded the entire 75%. All right. And in foreign exchange, it's a little bit different. And what happens here is that you are rewarded more money the more right you are and you lose more money the more wrong you are okay so it's more granular the payouts are more granular that's the main difference and we talk in terms of pips which are basically uh, percentage point moves or one hundredth of one percentage point moves in the price of an asset up or down okay so for example in foreign exchange if you are right just by one pip and you have set your risk levels such that you earn $1 per pip move in a currency, you're only going to make $1 on that trade. And if you're right by 10 pips, you'll make $10, right? So that's also immediately shows you the risk reward potential, which we'll get into uh, later. In binary options, if you're right just by a little bit, you know, just by one micro pip, you earn 75% ROI. And then on the flip side, when we're looking at risk management, if you are wrong in your binary options trade or bet, let's say you bet uh, a call position on Euro US dollar and you literally lost it by a hair's breadth, you lost it by one micro pip, you lose 100% of your wagered amount or the amount that you have uh, traded. With uh, FX, it's slightly different. There, it depends by how much you lost. So if you lost by two pips, and you were ready to lose $1 per pip, then you've just lost $2, right? And typically, FX traders, as we will do, as you will do, if you do choose to embark on this journey with us, we'll be using take profit and stop loss levels so that you have a predetermined level of uh, monetized gains or monetary gains that you can make on any specific trade and also how much you will be able to lose on any specific trade, right? In short, the ability to blow your account is dramatically less in FX, but also to have uh, monumental gains on your account supranormal returns in percentage terms is also dramatically lower in FX, okay? In terms of asset selection, 
um, actually binary options offers a wider degree of asset selection. You can be trading commodities, you can be trading indices, you can be trading spreads, you can be trading, of course, currencies and stocks as we're gonna be doing next year as well. In foreign exchange brokerages, normally you are only offered two asset classes, obviously FX, that's what FX is about. But increasingly in the last, I would say, five to eight years, as you have had more evolution in technologies in FX trading, they are also offering you commodities. You can trade uh, spot futures, oil, you can trade gold, you can trade basic metals, precious metals as well. But you can't trade stocks on FX. Uh, and in some instances, you can't trade indices, but that's rare. So the asset selection is wider on the binary side, but in currencies, you are nevertheless allowed to trade a wide range of currency assets that you may not have access to in your classic binary broker platform. In terms of the actual trading platform where you are going to be taking your long and short positions, mind you, long and short is the terminology we use in foreign exchange, and that's literally the same as call and put, right? Long means you want the asset to go up, short means you want the asset to go down. In binary, you will recall call effectively means that you want the asset to go up and put means that you want the asset to go down. Both binary options today and FX brokerages offer web-based solutions. And the web-based solutions we know very well, which are delivered to us from the likes of uh, Spot Option or Panda or Markets Pulse or Tech Financials on the binary side. And then also MT4. A lot of binary option providers allow you to trade straight from your MT4. The same holds true on the FX side, all right? So you have both web-based FX platform providers, and the same company may, of course, also offer an MT4 solution. In terms of price manipulation, which has always been an issue, uh, whether any, any asset you're trading, to be honest, but more so in binary options, uh, traders tend to blame the broker for price manipulation. And in certain instances, you know, some of the bucket shops, the unregulated bucket shops, the names of which I won't mention, of course, for legal reasons, but they will uh, engage in price manipulation. But generally speaking, it's very, very low in the binary options industry. And the same holds true for foreign exchange as well. So that is not something you need to be uh, worried about at all. In terms of conflict of interest, there is a significant conflict of interest in binary options. You are trading against the broker, despite um, popular belief that is often misinformation spread by a lot of binary brokerages, not all, that there are a multitude of uh, market makers available. There are simply none. In FX, however, this is the truth. In foreign exchange, um, the currency contracts that you are buying and selling, either on the spot or the futures market, uh, are settled by the Bank of International Settlements on a real-time basis. And over $4 trillion of currency exchange buying and selling is happening every single day, every 24 hours. Now, 90% of that $4 trillion, all right, is done on the institutional level. It is done through derivatives, forwards, and swaps. We're not interested in this. We are retail traders, so we fall in the 10%, which is still massive. It's close to 300 to $400 billion of volume is exchanged every day, all right? So the volume problem, which is there in binary options, is simply not there in FX, right? That doesn't mean binary options is unattractive. I prefer binary options as an asset class for the retail trader. And that's why the focus of BSP always will be, will be uh, binary options. But just to let you know that your skills are fully portable now, since you've been with us this far, to actually progress into FX as well. And the beauty here is that your FX broker, if they ever have unmatched volume, that means they don't have enough traders to actually offset your particular trade, they can access the liquidity markets, they can access a liquidity provider, they can access a market maker. One of the brokers where we are going to be um, giving a recommendation for you to deposit with if you wish to actually is a market maker themselves. They are the largest FX brokerage in the world. They're the most prominent one and you will have absolutely zero deposit risk. Um, they, are, they have access to this very large liquidity pool daily. So there is almost no conflict of interest, especially if you go with a, a regulated FX brokerage. Um, there's, I would almost go on to say there's 100% um, zero risk of, of you know, the, the broker taking positions against you um, or, or, or what have you. 
And that also then lends itself to the level of deposit safety. So in binary options, if you are depositing with brokers like some of the ones we partner with, again, I'm not going to get into names, we always uh, do a very high level um, uh, of due diligence on balance sheet risk, on the institutional holding structure of the brokers, on the deposit guarantees. And the brokers that we do partner with, the, the withdrawal risk and the deposit risk is so low. Um, in binary options. But generally speaking, there is an industry problem in binary options. So de deposit safety is always um, an issue that's up for debate. Um, so I would give it a medium score, but in foreign exchange, uh, the deposit safety is actually very high. You know, I have personally moved over 50,000 euros uh, back and forth, deposits and withdrawals uh, across almost three or four major prominent FX brokerages, even before I started Blue Sky Binary and I've never faced any issues. So the good news is that in FX, these basic things like, you know, will I ever get my money back if I win? That is not a problem if you go with a regulated broker. And then that brings me to regulation. So regulation is still very um, informal, unfortunately, in the binary options space. Of course, that's an opportunity as well. Um, However, in, in FX, I would say if you look at the spread, you have the bucket shops, the usual bucket shops that are completely unregulated to the, you know, sort of light touch FX brokerages that are regulated in Mauritius, in offshore jurisdictions that are generally known as tax havens that are a bit more light touch in their approach to regulation, uh, such as Seychelles. Um, it, those are still viable deposit options, but the beauty is that you also have US regulated, CFTC regulated, FCA regulated FX brokerages, right? Uh, it's a much more regulated, it's a much more well-researched uh, market. So I would say the regulation overall is medium and you can also get very stringently regulated brokers as well. Now, here's the, the thing for you in terms of money making, you know, is there actually return potential? In binary options, the return potential is massive. It really is. If you if you get your win rates right and you're using a an appropriate static money management uh, procedure, you can grow in hypothetically two three hundred dollars to a hundred thousand uh, dollars in a period of a year or two years. You know that's that's quite uh, possible. In FX, the way the asset class is set up, and I'll explain a little bit today how how it is. That's almost impossible um, for you to grow let's say a $500 account to $10,000 could take you two years, could take you a year, if you're taking um, the suggested risk uh, in your account. If you are, of course, trading like a freak and you are you know, trading 30, 40% of your account, you can achieve larger gains, but you can also lose your money. But the good news also is that the ability to blow your account is dramatically lower uh, in FX. It's tougher to blow your account just because of the way uh, FX is uh, set up. This is how FX basically works. You already know how binary options works, so I'm not going to waste your time on that. Basically, if this is the price of an asset, all right, and on the x-axis you have time, so this is the GMT time during the day, and on the y-axis you have price, and you see that it's gyrating, right? The usual lower lows, higher highs. And let's say I believe that this asset is going to drop in value over the next few hours. So what I would do in FX is I would take a short position, right? I would open a short position. I would effectively sell a certain amount of lots. And when I take the short position, I would effectively say that, okay, if the price drops by, let's say, 30 pips, this is the distance, I would set a take profit level. It's automatically triggered that the position then closes. I buy back those currency assets that I'd sold higher up, okay? And that short has netted me that amount of money. But also, before I open the short position, I will also set a stop loss level above my original price right? Because if the price moves against me, I want to minimize how much damage can be done to my account. And so if the price does go above that red level, the system will automatically shut up my position and I will swallow some degree of loss, how many ever pips that is, okay? This is the beauty about FX and this is how you should trade. You should always have a take profit level. That's your target, your price target, and of course your stop loss level, your parachute. That's where you bail. Right, And once these are set, once your position is open, you effectively just write out the position until either the take profit or in a worst case scenario, the stop loss level are met. Now, this is the thing about FX. The closer you are when you close your position to the take profit level, let's say you're somewhere here, right? Let's say you don't have the patience to wait 
for the take profit level to hit. Let's say you want to close it here. And this is very normal. This is classic rookie to medium expertise trader. You always want to you know, capture your gains quickly and you want to let your losses run. That's a, a classic mistake longer term. Um, but it's it's very it's easier said than done. Generally speaking, most people want to close their positions when they are already in profit. But you should let the winners run, okay, and cut your losses early. In any case, the closer you are to the take profit level that you have set earlier after you put, opened your short position, um, that's also means that's how much more money you have made on that particular position in pips. Remember, I told you in FX you are earning a fixed dollar amount per pip, right? So if you open the short here and you close your position here five pips later, you made basically five pips in profit. But if you waited and you close it somewhere here, you made 15 pips. All right. And the same holds true for let's say the price moved against you and you closed out your short early next to your stop loss level. The difference between where you closed down, where you entered your short, that's the amount of pips you lost. All right. That's effectively how FX works. And there are three things that you need to take into account. And again, this is an introduction, uh, introductory webinar. Uh, for those of you that will enter FX with us, we will, of course, go over this in more depth. But what is worth noting is that setting risk levels is a bit more complex in FX than binary options. There are a few things you need to take into account. Actually, there are three things. All right, so pay close attention to this. Firstly, there is something known as leverage. The amount you can borrow from your FX broker for each dollar of equity that you wager, okay? So, for example, if your account is set at five to one, and depending on which brokerage you go with, you will have different um, automatic leverage levels set for you, which you can go into settings and change, okay? But let's say your default leverage setting is five to one, and let's say you open an, a position, let's say a long position, okay, of $100, that's your risk. That's Let's say your account has $1,000 in it and you have opened a position of $100. If your leverage is 5 to 1, you are trading as if you had a position size of $500. Okay, It's five times magnified. That's leverage. So what this means is that if the currency moves in your favor right, and you are right on your long position, your gains are magnified by a factor of 5. But if it moves against you, your losses are also magnified by a factor of five. At first, for these reasons, we recommend a leverage of simply one-to-one. -one. So you are not borrowing any money from your broker. You are not trading on leverage. But, of course, some of you have natural talent. Some of you are good binary traders already. Some of you have become good binary traders. And so you can start with all the way up to 10-to-1, even 20-to-1 for those of you that have some experience before. I trade FX with a leverage of somewhere between 10 to 1 and 40 to 1, okay? And if you want to put this level of trading uh, in respect or in a comparative view to hedge funds around the world, um, if you look at all the big hedge funds that are based in Connecticut, in the US, or that are based in London, they are trading anywhere from 20 to 1 to 40 to 1, all the way up to 80 to 1. Leverage levels, of 100 to 200 to 400 to 1, and sometimes some bucket shops these days offer 2,000 to 1 leverage. It makes it very attractive for the tire kicker, for the trader who has you know $100 in their account to deposit with them. Suddenly, they're trading as if they have $20,000 in their account, but those accounts get bust very quickly. Remember, leverage can be beautiful if it works in your favor, but it can be disastrous if it works against you. Okay? The second thing is actually lot sizes. So lot size is how much units you are going to buy or sell, i.e. when you're wanting to go long, you're buying units, and when you're wanting to go short, you're selling units of a particular currency. All right. So the lot size is basically the minimum amount of units you can purchase of a specific currency pair. Right. The, the broker will offer you this. You are purchasing it from the broker um, or uh, selling it to the broker. A standard lot, a standard lot is known as 100,000 units, and this equates roughly to $10 per pip, which is very high risk at this stage. $10 per pip is off the charts high risk, okay? So you're not going to be buying 100,000 units. You're not going to be buying standard lots. I don't care how big your account is. A mini lot is known as 10,000 units, all right? This is $1 per pip. This is okay risk. This is medium risk. This is what I, I trade with. But for you at this stage, I would not suggest this. Unless you are a more experienced trader than I am, then you can, of course, do as you like. But the assumption here is that you're very new 
uh, to the industry. So what we're going to do is we're going to trade somewhere between 10,000 units or even smaller 1,000 units. And these are known as micro lots. All of this may sound a bit overwhelming, but I promise you it is very easy after the first week. All right. It gets as easy as binary options eventually. The micro lots, which is just 10 cents per pip, this is very low risk, right? So let's say you go long euro US dollar, but the euro moves against you by 100 pips. You've only lost $10 on your account, right? 100 times 0 0.10. That's a $10 loss. But if you got excited and let's say you had uh, purchased, um, you know, let's say one standard lot at 100,000 units and the euro moved against you by 100 pips, suddenly you're sitting on a $1,000 loss, right? So we're going to focus on the micro lot sizes. And don't worry, all the FX brokerages today offer, most of them, the good ones offer all types of lot sizes, all right? The third thing to take into account is the risk reward per trade. And this is very, very important. And this, you know, I'm going to make a small point about binary options here because everyone focuses on ITM. ITM is the most nonsensical measure of profitability or of a trader's capability. And I, I did a big webinar on Signal Hive uh, just two weeks ago, going over that concept more in detail. Why ITM is just one out of four things to look at, right? There are much more important things like variance, which is the, the ITM's signature around the mean uh, ITM through time, right? Um, it shows the sturdiness and the stability of, of your returns. Also, you need to look at volume. You know, how many trades do you uh, take per day? And so there are a lot more things uh, that you look at. Uh, and, and in FX, there is actually a second thing that you look at, and this is your profit factor. Okay. And this is the beauty. What I'm going to say next is probably going to get you excited. In binary options, you need to have about 58% to 60% to make money because the payouts are fixed, right? And they don't assume that you have a dynamic money management system, whatever. In FX, some of the best traders in the world have win rates of 40%, a win rate of 40% or even less, but they're making money. And the reason behind this is that when they are making money, they are winning by a factor of three to one or four to one. That means they are making 400 pips, right? And when they're only really ready to lose 100 pips. And when they're losing, they're only losing 100 pips, right? So although let's say they may be winning less than they lose, so out of 10 bets, let's say they're only winning four times. When they do win those four bets, those four trades, they win by a factor of three or four, such that the amount they lose, although they lose more in terms of number of trades, um, they're just not losing that much money when they lose. And that's what makes a really good trader. OK, so that's what I, I mean here by risk reward per trade. This allows you to determine how much dollars you can make or lose for any given trade based on the take profit and stop loss levels you set for that particular trade. OK, it's important to focus. And this is just you know best practice. It's not something you need to do um, as a dogma. It's not something you have to do all the time. But we would say a risk reward of two or higher for every trade um, is, is generally best practice. Okay, so what I'm trying to say in summary is when you win, you want to be winning by a lot of pips. When you're losing, you want to be losing only a few pips. Going back to um, this example, let me show you the, the chart again. If you can uh, see my screen now, do you remember here when I took a, one moment please, when I took a short position here, Effectively, I'd set my take profit level at about 25 to 30 pips below my, my entry price, right? Such that if the price fell by 20 to 30 pips and hit my take profit, I gained that many pips. But notice my stop loss was relatively tight. It was just maybe 10 pips above my short entry, such that if I lost, if the price did go up instead of going down, I would lose about 10 pips. If I divide the potential gain in pips, which is about, let's say, 30 pips for argument's sake, by the potential loss, which is 10 pips, I'm trading with a risk reward of three divided by one, which is three, right? Which is a very healthy risk reward ratio. Okay, so just to um, recap what I've said about setting risk levels, we're gonna be looking at three things, leverage, lot sizes, and your risk reward per trade. I reiterate, this is overwhelming now, but it becomes very easy after you dabble in it after a bit. Okay, so let's discuss how FX brokerages make money. 
because we all know how binary option brokerages make money, how they really make money, and of course, how they tell you they make money. This, unfortunately, in this industry at this moment, there is a bit of misinformation. Uh, but for those of you that are at Blue Sky Binary, you understand how binary option brokers actually make money. And in FX, it's different. And that's for the better. So as you know, binary brokers mainly, and I'm not talking about Nadex here, I'm talking about mainly the normal binary brokerages, they make money from your losses or from the losses of other depositors, right? And unfortunately, 90% um, of binary option traders lose money. And that 90% of, of losses go to pay about 5% to 10% of traders that are making good money, right? And the broker makes a percentage no matter who wins or loses. Now, the beauty with FX brokerages is that they have access to market makers. And when their risk is high, when they see, okay, their balance sheet is exposed because suddenly these hotshot people from Blue Sky Binary or whatever have taken these positions, they're probably going to win. They will hedge out their positions. The, the, the FX broker will take that net balance sheet exposure and they can hedge it out in the wider FX spot markets. They can literally, uh, Deutsche Bank, for example, controls 15% of the hedging market in FX. They are a big market maker. Uh, they will take that, the balance sheet risk away from the FX brokerage, which means that the conflict of interest, you're not going to be getting a call from your FX brokerage account manager telling you, oh, by the way, you should go long here uh, when actually they want you to go short. You know, that if that happens, you're probably, you've deposited with a bucket shop. A, a true proper FX broker doesn't need to do that, right? Because they have access to market makers. So the way FX brokerages actually make money is they either charge a flat trade fee per trade, right? Whether you're making a $1,000 position, if you're taking a large position, let's say on the US dollar, Japanese yen, or if you're taking a tiny position of $20, they may just charge a flat trade fee of three to $10 per trade, okay? That's one way. Some don't charge anything, but they introduce a spread into your entry price. So if the price of the Euro US dollar right now is 1.1355 and you wanna take a long position, they might build in a, a 0.5 micro pip, sorry, a 0.5 pip spread, which is five micro pips or a one, dollar, uh, one pip spread into the price so that you get a slightly less competitive entry. So they get that little bit of an edge, all right? So one thing to note on spread, by the way, is that you will notice that this spread dramatically increases when there's news events on very big pairs like Euro, US dollar, US dollar, Japanese yen, most brokerages are offering you very competitive spreads, you know, 0.2 pips, 0.5 pips, negligible spread. But you may see heavy spread like three, four, five, 10 pips on these pairs during major news. And of course, when we get into news trading in FX, we will uh, give you some ingenious ways to get around that. That's all, of course, up, up there for the grabs. But what you need to know is that spread is something that's dynamic and it changes all the time. But this is effectively how the broker makes money, all right? So there's nothing about complaining that, oh, my broker has spread. Spread is just a part of life in FX. The good thing in binary options is that generally speaking, especially if you're trading with some of the brokerages that you know we have vetted for you, spread is minimal. You should never be seeing spread of more than a pip or 0.5 pips. If you start to see spread of two, three, pips, then the broker is playing games or there's some sort of connectivity problem, right? But just note that there are two ways that FX brokerages are making money. One is by charging a flat trade fee, okay, or a pip spread. So a few things here. Um, if you want to embark on FX with us at this moment, later, of course, at some point next year, we are going to be uh, tailoring our entire binary options trading university 12 week structured course which has exams for binary options into fx as well right and there we're going to be teaching fx without you having to have the knowledge in binary but this webinar is more aimed at people who have been with us or who are wanting to become binary options traders and then fx um, it's mandatory that you understand core 4.0 it's just you know that's just assumed knowledge by now um, if you do and if you can trade at least a few formations in core 4.0, um, you are probably going to be uh, already knowing what to do in FX very well. Core works very, very well, especially the long-term positions like Dead Cat Bounce, Bollinger Bounce, Channel Surfers, Breakouts. These are everyday formations in FX. These are everyday formations in equities and most asset classes. They work in binary. We adapted them over to binary from FX, right? So um, what I would suggest is if you are interested, you know you should know core so that we can talk at, talk at the same level. 
Um, for those of you that don't understand the way the market manifests itself and you're kind of just meandering in BSB, uh, FX is not for you at this moment. Um, so this is definitely for something you want to do after you've gone through the BSB Trader University course. As you know, it can happen very quickly in four weeks. You can do all the exams and the live trading test, or it can go at your pace. It can last about 12 weeks. But at the end, you will emerge a professional trader, and these skills are fully portable to FX. Okay. Um, and this is what I, you know, this is just. Uh, bleeding on from that cross application this is key so everything you know when to go call when to go put uh, when not to trade the market hours when liquidity differentials kick in when you have ranging markets when you have trending markets 95 percent of the concepts that you know in binary that we have taught you are applicable to fx right and that's that's the beauty the only difference is money management you know the leverage the lot sizes but this takes about a week and, and i've gone over it in this webinar already one thing I would ask you to do is to please manage your expectations uh, with this asset class. Okay, so FX is a lower risk, lower return asset class than binary, but it can be high yielding for those who have a professional and mature view on their capital growth through time, right? Um, if you have a longer term horizon, uh, this is a good asset class for you. Just to give you a benchmark, the best traders today that are trading at hedge funds or investment banks are the ones that are generating about 15 to 30% on larger accounts and 25 to 50% on tiny micro accounts uh, per month. Okay. Uh, the risk of blowing accounts, as I mentioned earlier, is much lower in binary, although the chance of very uh, stellar returns is also lower in, in FX. But again, I, I want to stress here, if you're thinking you're going to be making 100 to 200%, Per month that's just completely unsustainable in fx in binary you can get away with it that's still very high but you know you got to compare your investing uh schedule your investing expectations relative to your investing expectations of putting cash in your bank account right if that's earning 0 0.5 or one or two three percent depending on which jurisdiction you're in a binary is offering you the ability to earn 100 percent return per month um, fx is offering you the ability to earn 15 to 30 percent return on capital per month right that's just the, the fact of it. Let's discuss some uh, deposit and trading options. So first of all, it's very important for us to uh, reiterate that we have no CPA um, cost per acquisition or cost per lead relationships with uh, these FX brokerages. And we've never had it in, in Blue Sky Binary for BSBTU, for the binary education, and we're not going to have it for FX. We have certain CPA relationships with brokers on the six